Hello, I'm Sheila Rogers. Welcome to Sounds Like Canada. This morning, a special edition of the program coming to you from Jane and Finch in Toronto. This is a community within a community. There are about 75,000 residents who come from at least 70 different countries. It's also an area with a reputation for gang wars and gunfights in Canada. If you've been listening to recent news reports, here's a bit of what you may have heard. This is a place so notorious for street violence, the newspapers call it the gun crime capital of Canada. When Paul Martin turned up in Toronto's troubled Jane Finch neighbourhood this morning, local residents peppered him with questions. Many hoped they'd get the chance to talk to the Prime Minister directly about their problems of guns, crime and the feeling of despair among young people. Sabrin Jebra Selassie lives at Jane and Finch in Toronto, an area known for its shootings. She was Eamon Beckel's next door neighbour. He's the teenager who was shot dead on the steps of a church while attending the funeral of his friend who was also gunned down on the streets of Toronto. Some recent media reports referring to the Jane Finch neighbourhood in Toronto. For the next hour on Sounds Like Canada, I'm going to take you where I went earlier this week, right to the heart of Jane Finch. I wanted to spend a few hours hanging out with some really smart young people who are living and working in the area. It was a chance to ask them what they think of the neighbourhood's reputation and what kind of positive message they want to relay about Jane Finch to the rest of Canada. My first stop, the home of Paul Nguyen, founder and director of the website jane-finch.com. He started out by introducing me to a few of his friends, including the hip-hop artist Blackest Ninja. Hi, Paul. Hi, welcome. I'm Sheila. How, How are, are you? you? Good. Good. We have a lot of video clips we can show you, stuff like that, a lot of gadgets. Great. Some of my is friends are here. Are you taking us to the belly of the beast? Is this, yeah, this, this is where, is where it all happens? Yeah, Hi! Yeah. Such a pleasure to thank meet you. you. Thank you, thank Bacchus you, thank you. Sheila. Sheila. Nice to meet you. CBC, yeah. right? CBC. CBC. Hey. Have you, do you spend much time here? It's a great room. This is the, the base, the headquarters. There's a little, yeah. who's good at the foosball, are you? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm good at foosball. Yeah. I'm good, I'm good. I'm not the champ, but I'm all right. You should have some videos. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you know what you should do? You should see a couple of the videos that yeah. we got going on here. Okay, I want to see those. Show them, um, show them New World Order. This one that actually you've made here in this room but on, in front of that screen. And uh, if you see those weapons, they're just toy pistols. So, yeah, <laughs> it'll play in the background. But yeah, this video was like, it just took us like 15 minutes to make and it's like a quickie. But uh, we did it for fun, we upload on the site and a lot of people download it. And, and Describe what we're seeing, Paul. You're seeing Blackest Ninja rapping with uh, guest rapper Chucky Akins. And he's just doing his thing, dancing and shaking his dreads and doing and all this that. is all in slow motion, it's really beautifully done. Yeah, yeah it's alright, it's pretty good. He performed, performed pretty well. Yeah. It's on, and it's on the website, jamefinch.com, so if you want to vote that, because you know, I'm trying to get points. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, we just do videos all day long and there's a lot of other things that we do as well. Sometimes uh, we'd get invited by like, you know, local schools, high schools, universities, and we drop in and do like a little guest lecture or whatever. We try to help out the community. What, what do you lecture about when you do a guest lecture? It could be a various th things because uh, I guess a lot of people, they look up to us and the rappers as uh, role models. Okay, like Blackest Ninja. Yeah, right on. But, uh, you know, it could, be, it could range from, you know, when I go to university, they ask me about media stereotypes or how, to, uh, how Jane Finch areas portrayed in the media or just ethnic minorities. In high schools, you know, they, they, they talk to us about, uh, you know, how to keep kids motivated staying in school, stuff like that. And, you know, because a lot of the kids, they, they want to get into the video production or the music production, and they see us as, like, paving a way. And uh, they ask us for our advice, so I mean... Well, if you shot this in 15 minutes, seriously, yeah, yeah. you're a good person to give advice. Yeah, it's, well, we hope so, we hope so. We're looking for funding. Hopefully we can get funded to, you know, teach these kids more, more, like more kids and reach more people. And we have people like Mark, he's actually executive producer of the website. And this guy's all over CD TV, CD, like everywhere. I have like enough pictures of him if you want to take a look on the website. <laughs> Like here he is with uh, Ann Romer. He was talking about some of the banning 50 Cent, yeah. and inside your CBC building, doing a little interview. 
And uh, yeah, I just trying to keep busy and you know trying to promote uh, the Jane Finch area in a really positive and really good way. Yeah. What's going on in the video? What are we hearing in the background? Oh, it's just you have to ask Blackus. Those are his lyrics. Yeah, so Blackus, tell us what's going on. Here. Well, that video there, the song is called NWO New World Order, and it's just talking about um, the situation, the system, in my perspective. It may not be um, everybody's perspective, but it's, I'm just showing you how I see the world and what's going on in the changes. And what's your perspective? My perspective, it's, um, it's going on very violent right now, and violence seems to be the only thing that's being promoted. And, and what we're doing right now, especially in this video, it may seem, it may look violent, but when you hear the lyrics, it's totally opposite. So what we're trying to is catch viewers' eyes and stuff. But um, violence is being like, it's like, it's engulfed the whole community, even our whole city, and everybody's thinking that's a way to express themselves. And what we do is, you know, we do music and we do videos and stuff for people, other rappers. So instead of being angry and wanting to, um, you know, let off some tension in a violent way, you can do it through music and you can do it through videos or through arts or whatever you want to do. And you get, you learn that stuff when you come work with these guys and also when you're just even knowing them, you know? You didn't have anything like this when you were a little kid. Oh, no, man. I had nothing like that. I, was, I'm bl I feel like a little kid right now when I see my video, man. So people in the, on the website and my, my colleagues over here, we're doing it with out of our money out of our own pockets, right? And um, we're getting a lot of exposure. And it's, it, it's appreciated, but unfortunately, people are just doing it because the place is hot right now and a lot of stuff is happening. And they should have helped us before, you know what I'm saying? But now... Well, what's going on in time? Time must t change all things. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, I, about this, Paul. Oh, this is a Vietnamese music video. So we don't just do rap. We try to like you know expand, doing you know other cultures. There's a lot more cultures that I still want to do videos for, and uh, we're just slowly expanding. And uh, because we only have like one camera and one or two guys working, so it's kind of hard. Uh, we wish we had like a whole army yeah, of people and government money. Yeah. She's help. holding a guy who looks like he's just been shot in the chest. Oh, no, that was just... Okay. Well, <laughs> okay, it's just a video. It's like, um, uh, like a movie type of video where they're lovers and then she gets kidnapped by the evil bad guy, which is me in the video, <laughs> right? So we kidnap her and it's like a revenge story where he has to go rescue her and he ends up getting wounded and he's going to die. And I don't know. <laughs> Explain the song. Maybe they want it's just a song about two lovers being torn apart. So it's a typical thing. And I want to dramatize it, but make it, give it an action twist. Because that's what we like doing is the action movies and, and the stuff like that. So anyways, <laughs> yeah. There's guns in that one too. Yeah. Guns all over yeah. the world, honey. Well, I mean, there's guns in Terminator and, yeah. and Aliens. And yeah. uh, it's no different. Yeah. And yeah. You know, a lot of people are aiming the, what I've been noticing the past couple of interviews that we've been doing, they've been blaming hip hop for violence, but I seen the movie Saw too, and I was petrified, you know what I'm saying? And nobody's blaming the director for doing anything negative or bad. So it's I, right now, hip hop is the target and that's okay. We're willing to accept that. And we're even willing to roll with the punches because it can't be stopped. If you want to ban it from HMV, we'll get it on the internet. If we don't get it on the internet, we'll get it somewhere else. So it's either you roll with it. And unfortunately, it, how it originally started, it was for a positive and it was a voice for the voiceless. And um, people didn't even accept it as music, it was rap. And until I think Will Smith was the first person to ever get an award for uh, rap. Um, album and so when it got and now it's getting a little bit commercialized they're just doing the same thing like they do with the other industries of movies movies wasn't as violent as back in the days and now it's getting more violent so it's the same kind of thing and obviously the youths them that are singing saying the language or doing the art form are in a position where they're expressing what they're living and what they're going through and it may sound harsh from somebody who has money or has the um, has an opportunity but it's reality for these youths here, you know? So, and they're making money for talking the truth. Change the system and change the way things are. Maybe we could not rap about guns and drugs and stuff like that. There, there are still the masters who are rapping like Maestro. And Maestro told me when in an interview we did just a couple of weeks ago that when he goes into a recording studio, he's not going there to make a record. He's going there to make history. Oh yeah, well, that's a true. That's 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 some great words. That means he's a lover of the music. Um, a lot of people, 
don't think that people just go in the studio and they think they can make a banging song and that's another reason why the canadian industry is stunted and ain't able to grow because these a and r reps are like 50 years old um, rich white f people no disrespect living in suburbs the, the perspective of music they're not they don't know so they don't know the street so what they're going to do is they're going to watch something on television and they're going to see anybody who's imitating that yeah that's let's go sign them instead of seeing the, hearing the real perspective and when realness comes out a lot of people will see that and it's like they have a choice like do i want to do this or do i do do i wanna Im imitate do i want to you know learn from his mistakes so what has to happen is that real musicians from toronto will be seen there's even people who try to ban us and, and just because you mentioned maestro a while ago i'd I like to show you a picture with me and maestro <laughs> and we were at uh, some much music uh, anti stop the violence uh, stop the racism award show which uh that was back in 99 and uh, my team was one of the top 10 winners across Canada so we were on TV and it was cool we did a little commercial about you know stopping racism basic speakers I've been on the hustle ever since they had can tell beepers with the eight ball jacket and you and sneakers a young D boy learning from those ghetto teachers people you know they, they don't like some of the uh, you know what do you kind of what do you call those kind of people that want to ban us Without naming them. Uh, oh, we call them haters in the ghetto. They're called haters. Uh, I don't want to say certain politicians, but right now all of a sudden politicians are all our friends because <laughs> I guess it's the voting time and they're in shady times, but it's okay still. We're, we're taking all the help we can get. Yeah, because a lot of people fail to realize they see one or two of the more controversial type of videos, but they fail to see like 90, 99% of the site, there's like a lot of articles written for kids how to like you know stay out of drugs and a lot of positive stuff positive videos a lot of history there's so much more content but people see that one you know so-called negative video and then they jump on it and they just want to ban the whole site and the reason they want to keep us down is because like, we're reaching a lot of the youths more reaching more people than you know many of the organizations that have been here for 30 20 to 30 years mm -hmm. and uh, they're just trying to you know keep us down i don't know why but i feel like we're doing something great for this community and a lot of people are being united and they're working together you have these at-risk youths and rappers i mean we're taking them off the streets they're too busy developing their videos writing the scripts having meetings they don't have time to get into the bad stuff and we're doing this all with no money so imagine if we had like a budget even just like a hundred thousand or half a million these guys would be too busy like we'd be too busy doing interviews they'd be like making their videos because they want to get famous they want to get known they want to work hard and you know be creative so i feel like you know why is this so essential to you paul well i started the the site because uh, i wanted to learn about the history of my neighborhood and also uh, i took um, a <coughs> film program at university so that's one of my loves i've been making videos since i was uh, 13 14 years old with mark who was my next door neighbor mm -hmm. And on the weekends, we used to just hang around Jane Finch and make little cops and robbers movies, all types of movies, even zombie movies. And yeah. I'm going to plug the sound in. I'll show you all the clips that we did over the years. I made like a zombie movie in high school and they're pretty realistic. It was like a lot of blood and gore. And, and we're, as a matter of fact, we're in the process of working with, um, we're, well, hopefully it goes through with them. Um, you think at Jane Finch Mall and we're trying to do a Stop the Violence movie. And they said they, they're really trying to help us out right now. So a lot of different um companies or not companies organizations in the community that would never have even uh, walked by me and now they're hell hollering at us and you know it's it's moving in i guess a more progressive mo more oh, progressive yeah, movie this, this was an old zombie movie i did in high school shot at cw jeffries yeah jeffries yeah what's who yeah, that's, uh, that's and that's mark Zombie. That's Mark. Mark's one of the zombies. And this is like a little fight scene. Um, you just hang a while and watch uh, one of the zombies' heads will get like twisted off. And uh, we had no special effects, so everything had to be done really creatively. We had no resources, so we had to be really, you know, we had to do a lot of tricks and stuff. This is before uh, CGI. <laughs> but yeah, Sean and Jeffries, uh, they're really nice. They, we, we shot after schools. We stayed there till like, you know, after school till nighttime. And we had the whole school to ourselves, so it was really fun and uh, it was a really great experience. And the movie was, the movie's like an hour long. And it was all shot on a small little uh, Sony Handycam. We had no editing equipment. And this is back in the day, so everything is edited as you see it in the camera. And I remember... And it's, sorry to cut you off, and you know, speaking of equipment, I'm looking at that XL7, man, and get a couple of those on the team, it'll be great, you know? Yeah, the head part. Okay. okay, this is a cool part. <laughs> okay. Oh, 
A head was just turned right around. Lovely. You can check it out on the website. So. It's all on the website. Yeah, it's all free. The, all free. free. Check yeah. it out. Jane-Finch.com. You got it, man. Okay. So you've so, been doing this since you were about 14. Yeah. Doing it for over 10 years now, and now we're just starting to get a little notice. So it's been an interesting journey, and uh, hopefully, you know, we want to make it, you know, we want to basically create an industry here in Jane Finch because it's such a pool of talent, but it goes unnoticed. And we feel like we could be one of the first people to actually harvest all these people and create a farm where we can, you know, produce all this art. And sell them and make money. Yeah, never quit your struggle, never bust your bubble. And do your worst ways, there'll be better days. It's yeah. funny, yo, how people run away and quit. It's like having a gun, but you just don't have a clip. What you dealing with? I see bangers on the street. I see homeless folks just hustling to eat. Kids getting Gun bullets try to pinch, move step by step Every second, every inch, compare Jane and Finch To LA or even Harlem We live the same struggles and we live the same problem Never wanting to solve them, but we talk like we hopeless There's more than ghetto life, so yo, you gotta focus And yo, you gotta notice that this life is hard Always carry on, homie, never quit what you start and homie's gotta Why do you think that you're reaching people in a way that all There are all sorts of other organizations that come in here And they mean to do very well but they're not reaching like 30,000 hits a month, think, you know? Well, first of all, you know, a lot of the o o older organizations are run by the older people and they're a little bit out of touch with the youth. And, you know, when they're growing up as, as youth, whatever interests them is not what interests people today. So we have a lot of social pro programs, which I think are great, but a lot of the youth aren't into that and they're not going to that. But we feel like we can combine entertainment with education. And right now the big thing is, is hip hop and rap and doing the videos and getting people's attentions. And once we get, have their attention, we, we do like a cool rap video. They come to the site, they check out the rap video, and then they hang around the site and they check out other things like the articles and inform, information or links or phone numbers. They can have, you know, they can contact people and learn a lot from the website and not just watching the videos. So it's like a double whammy. Double whammy. It's even beyond Jane and Finch, and just to reach out to people everywhere, like kids with, kids with problems, they're like all over the world. Yeah. We have visitors from all over the world. And uh, also, you know, this community, this website's not just for the community, but for people outside the community, so they can learn about. It. And once you can, once you can unify Jane and Finch, you can unify anywhere. We can unify even the Middle East, believe me. So um, what we're doing is just the the beginning of something that is going to grow a lot bigger. So JaneandFinch.com is like more than a website; it's like a a mindset. You know what I'm it's saying? Movement. It's a movement. Yeah. You know what I mean? Blackus, what are the odds of unifying Jane and Finch? Uh, right now with the website, the odds is great because, I mean, I'm from, I'm from all over Jane and Finch. I used to live all over the place. And how I even got to meet um, these guys, I know them not indirectly, but how I got to meet and sit down with them is through the website. And now I'm working with them and we're doing great things. So I know the website is going to be more than, not, not going to be gone tomorrow. It's going to be here for next year and then next year after that we've just been operated for about a year now so it's a good thing it's a beautiful thing man i was with a group a couple of years back and um I'm gonna play your music in the background, right? yeah right on and uh, it wasn't really going anywhere until i said i'm gonna do a solo thing and then i linked up with these guys here and it's it's a beautiful thing going on right now again yeah talk about your rap because it's not the typical gangster rap it's actually a conscious rap like, explain that oh yeah my rap is is a I, I try to deal with some real issues in my rap, or I try to talk about the community, I try to talk about my people, because I, I don't just see myself as a black man, I see myself as an ambassador for my race. So I got to make sure I, I come good. And at the same time, I will tell you the realness of life, so it, it may be a little harsh at times, but at the end of the day or the end of the song, you're going to get a positive um, outlook on it, because that life is yin and yang, you know? Good and bad things do happen. But um, a lot of rappers or the industry right now is just focused on the negative, so everybody is able to say yo hip-hop is only promoting negative because these major companies are only promoting these kind of artists so when certain artists come out and do the, a different thing like Kanye West and like Dead President and like even Public Enemy back in the day I, even on speaking on Public Enemy they feared that they feared that message they tried to um, smother it if we had Public Enemy pumping instead of um, other violent rappers or other rappers are talking nonsense there would be a totally different kind of situation environment so before we blame the um the rappers we got to blame the industry mm -hmm. yeah on your website you actually suggest maybe you've been saving lives is that do you think that's true that's, that's like, well, yeah, yeah even with some of the more 
uh, you know, controversial rappers, even like uh, they've touched a lot of people's lives. And I, I know this one rapper named Chucky Akins. He, there was this one girl that she was thinking about suicide, and she wrote uh, some of his lyrics on her arm. She basically like you know cut herself. And you know uh, her friends put uh, her in touch with Chucky directly, and then he talked to her and talked things out, and basically he saved one life, and that's that's great. I'm pretty sure he saved more lives. And these are the hardcore rappers that all these politicians and everyone's trying to ban, but they don't know that these these are the people that are actually reaching the youth out there. People like Chucky, Blackest, the Smugglers. There's so many rappers on the website I can name. I mean, we had when we were, became a little bit higher profile with all the news stuff, uh, we had some of the local MPs you know, invite us in because they, they said they had a lot of money and they wanted to get ideas on how to allocate that kind of funding. So they invite me and Mark in. We met up with some of the assistants of the, these politicians who I won't name, but you know, they asked us I'll for our input. I'll song, don't worry. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Blackest man. Anyway, so they invite us to ask us for ideas of how to do funding or, or what kind of programs they should you know, give the money to. And we're telling them, one of my biggest dreams is to have a open a recording studio or production center in the heart of Jane Finch. Maybe in having it situated in a community center where these kids can come and work and learn. You know, not everyone's going to make it as a rapper and not everyone can rap, but they can learn a lot of skills like audio engineering or sound design. Yeah, and they, they, they get a lot of discipline from it. And we can also incorporate the schools with it. Like maybe you need like a certain average, like, you know, 75% and up. And then all of a sudden you see like 90% of the, op the population, Jane Finch, getting 90s. And all these black kids and Asian kids and brown kids. And they, because they're fighting for that studio time. And I think that would change. One little studio can change like the whole community. I'm, I want to ask you to just do a little freestyle for us, if you wouldn't mind. Something, something for you guys. No okay, problem. Hey, Black. Live on CBC, how we do it. JaneFinch.com. Big business, more movements. Yo, check it. Look how this place turned around. In the 60s, the front of the bus, we weren't even allowed. We tried to talk and protest with a peace crowd. They didn't listen, so we had to take the peace out. They painted paradise, put up a parking lot. Politicians, they never honest, they just talk a lot. What about my peeps doing life on the lock? What about the young youths doing nothing on the block? Black. Executive criminals, they never get caught. But young black males always get shot. Can't you see they plot? They still got us picking their crops. Crooked cops bringing the rocks. Arrests for chops. So tell me, this madness has got to stop. This madness has got to stop. It's janefinch.com live on CBC. I know you heard of Blackest Ninja, one of the best MCs. Woo! And if you can't stop me, just got to watch me. You can see me on the TV, on the radio. I got a crazy flow. What do you know about T.O.? What do you know about Scarborough? What do you know about the Joe? Let me tell you what I got. Let me tell you where I'm from. Jane Finch, don't act dumb. Everybody wants some. Don't start the beef. Love the peace. Everybody love my streets. Don't even want to speak. You can get it. Oh, I'm just playing with y'all. Play. <laughs> Vote for Blackest. Vote for Blackest. Blackest Ninja. For Prime Minister. <laughs> JadenFinch.com. That was fantastic. No Thank problem, you. No Thank you. We should go out for a tour. Yeah, we'll, all go. we'll all go out together. Right okay. Now. Okay. So Paul, Paul Nugan, Webmaster, is going to deal with you. Let's go deal okay. with that. All right, is that it? Is this goodbye? Yeah, this is good. we'll Just for now? We'll see, we'll see oh, each I other know, again. Oh, I know again. that. Thank you. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. It was really... really... Appreciate it. Thank you again. <laughs> well, we're going to leave the brain center of jane-finch.com. I'm never going to forget that. It's like it's tattooed on my head. And, uh, Paul, you're going to take us out, right? Take us out for a little tour? Sure. We're going to drive around the neighborhood, and I'll show you... And where I grew up and how I lived here and, you know, the things, the kind of positive activities that, you know, me and my friends engaged in. Perfect. So we'll be back. Okay, we will be back indeed in about 90 seconds from now. You're listening to Sounds Like Canada on CBC Radio 1. I'm Sheila Rogers and we are in Jane Finch land. You're listening to CBC Radio 1, 99.1 in Toronto. Welcome back to Sounds Like Canada on CBC Radio 1. I'm Sheila Rogers. Paul Nguyen and I are going off to the Jane and Finch Community and Family Centre and we're picking up our co-guide, Tanika Morgan, whom I have spoken with before when she won a Women of Distinction Award back in the spring from the YWCA. So this should be a nice little reunion. So, Paul, we couldn't be any closer to Jane and Finch. There's the Jane Finch Mall, right? That's yeah, the back of it? Yeah, we live right across. Uh, Mark used to live across from me, so I used to play in this little uh, yard with my sister, and he was like a little kid, and he came over and he asked to play with us, and I was kind of unsure because I thought it was weird, but then, you know... We Why did you think it was weird? 
because he was a stranger. But it just shows how the Jane Finch community is. That everyone's, you know, they're they're warm and they're welcoming and they just connect. So we don't just we, you have a next door neighbor, but you have to know them. We don't we don't just you know we we get along with everyone and you know it's great. And I had best friends of all colors and all races, so it was a really positive and really beneficial experience to be even growing up here. I think so. What's your assessment of the level of racism in Jane Finch? I think it'd be hard to be racist, especially if you're living in like such a dense area and your next door neighbor is brown or white or blue or yellow. I, I don't think you could really grow up with racism because, <laughs> I mean, we're all here and we all came from the same struggles. You know, war-torn countries are just, you know, a lot of people are in the immigrants here and you, you can't really hate on anyone else. And everyone wants just to make, they want to make a good living here and they want to raise their kids. And I think it's a fabulous place. I mean, this is a what... Uh, Toronto and Canada is all about with all the people, all the colors, the culture and the ethnicities. And I think Jane Finch is basically one of the premier representatives of this uh, modern society. Well, before I came into your house, and thanks very much for the invitation, I stood out here and I just sort of described what I saw. And I just felt, okay, I don't, I don't know the community, right? I've only actually been out here once before. And of course, it's been with a microphone. I haven't just come out to hang. But... It struck me as, as just I'm looking around on a day like today too, kind of overwhelmingly gray. Yeah, gray? Gray. Gray as in the color gray? Gray as in the color gray. Like, where's the, where are the big trees? Where's the, you know, oh, oh, oh. the gardens? Yeah. There's the back of this mall, you know. Go into the car for now, <laughs> it's yeah, raining. it's starting to rain, yeah. it's perfect. Okay. But, but <laughs> well, it's, I know, I mean, yeah. obviously you see it in a different way, but yeah. when we sit on the news, we see yeah. these big tall towers and it's always yeah, a lot the notorious of, Jane yeah, Finch yeah. Carter. It's always the notorious. It's like a concrete jungle yeah. here. Yeah. yeah. Um, we do have some parks and there's a lot, there's like a creek and ravine and all that stuff. Well, but, it, you know, downtown, for for example, no, it's a... Like some of my friends, they live at Young and Finch. First of all, like in their schools, they have a television set in every classroom. Well, I'm amazed by that. Uh, but, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's just the funding. I, I see some some neighborhoods like they have like these amazing water parks like at Young and Finch There's a water park there. I've never seen it in my life. I was uh, amazed and all we have here is like one or two basketball courts You know the usual stuff that it's a, it's there to entertain the kids But it's not gonna really help them grow anymore and we need more interactive yeah. stuff here. I guess you know here from You know, we all come from where we come from, right? I look around here and I see what's missing and you see what's here you see what you do have yeah yeah we, we i mean uh, if you came on sunday and there was a flea market at the jane finch mall it's been here every sunday for i don't know how many decades and there's just a mesh of cultures everyone you know selling different they're selling food jamaican food or they sell you know different karaoke dvds it's basically everything you can get on one day at, at jane finch mall and uh I mean, it's a great place I and mean, there's so many different cultures and I don't know what else to say right oh, now. Well, yeah. No, this is good. Tell me, tell me what we're driving by right now. You can give us a little we're guided driving, tour, Paul. Uh, down Driftwood. You know, we're behind the the Palisades building, which is where was uh, Prime Minister Paul Martin came to visit. And the Palisades are gr they're great big towers, right? Yeah, it's basic. I feel like it's like uh, iconic uh, in the area. It's like um, a symbol because it's like uh, we we all refer to our like RSC and Tower because it's the tallest structure here, and you yeah. see it off the highway. Yeah. So uh, this is like basically like the. the the central place of Jane Finch, and um, now we're just driving along. How long has your family been here, Paul? Um, well, my parents immigrated from Vietnam, or from the, they're escaping the war. They came here in 7980, you know, with the wave of boat people, which what we call them, but my mom didn't come over on a boat, per se, but anyways, she's a boat person or whatever. And uh, they came over here, they started life in downtown Toronto, they lived near the CNE. And then when I was like five or six, they moved to Jane and Finch. We lived in the apartment building and I had a lot of interesting experiences there. And, uh, you know, grow growing up here, you know, you're exposed to a lot more things and uh, you, you don't have that kind of uh, racist perception of other people because uh, you're growing up with them. And so it becomes a norm. I remember asking my kid brother, uh, I'm 25 now, so my brother's 12, but I asked him when he was uh, six years old, what do you want to do when you grow up? And he was all into the whole hip hop, like the whole rap uh, culture. And I asked him, so what do you want to do as like a vocation? And he's like, when I grow up, I want to be black. So that just goes to show, you know, like the mentality of people here. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he marries a, a black woman. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at all. So, you know, it's just a mesh of cultures once again, I got to say. 
Okay, we're in front of I don't 4400 Jane, which is across from Driftwood Community Center. We're in the building, and we're going to visit Tanika Morgan. Cool. Let's go. Okay, let's go. So we're heading into the community center. Yep. This is the entering the, the building. Yep. Yep. <laughs> play by play. City Hi. TV everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong station. CBC. Oh, I thought CTV everywhere. CBC everywhere. CBC everywhere. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, it's just great. You see how people are really warm. And yeah, immediately. Here. Yeah, and they're all different colors. Yeah. Colors of the rainbow. So. This is a side that most people don't see and most of the news organizations they don't report on, they just report on the gun violence, but they don't see a lot of hardworking people, you know, doing a lot for the community, you know, giving their time and effort and trying to make a big, huge difference in their own lives and in, in many other people's lives. Hi! Hi, Tanika! How are you? Hi. Good! Remember me? I'm Sheila and I talked to you really early one morning. Yes, I yes. remember. Yeah. And do you know Paul? I met Paul. Okay. Yeah. We're stand now we're standing out, so now that we've got you, and your people at the front lines are fantastic. They're oh, really, really fun. Jane Finch Community and Family Center, and what do you do with them? I'm the project manager for the Women Moving Forward program, and that's a program for single moms in the area that want to become financially independent through academic upgrading. <sighs> it's a mouthful, but it's great work. It's a five-year project, and we started in August. I started the program in October, so it's very personal. It's, it's you know, getting out of poverty and realizing that there are systems that, as much as they are there to help you, they can also hinder your, your growth growth and so this project to me is is one of the ways that we can address address some of these systemic barriers for women and in your earlier project you'd really been there yourself right yeah my earlier project I was um, working with the Toronto Youth Cabinet and the the constant criticism was that you're not representative of, of communities like Jane and Finch and communities like you know the at-risk quote-unquote at-risk neighborhoods um, and so that was also very personal in that I was trying to create that bridge and encourage you know, people to, to challenge organizations like the, the Toronto Youth Cabinet and and their local representatives their city councillors and, and really reclaim their community and, and talk about those issues what happened to turn you around? Because when you were 14, you were sleeping on park benches. Well, to be clear, I slept on one bench. Oh, okay. <laughs> but... <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make you sort of... Uh... <laughs> no, it's okay. It's actually, it's, it's actually been very funny talking about it because they're like, how many park benches did you sleep on? And so I'm like, it's actually just... Janika one. Morgan slept here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think really it was just, I mean, by the time... Because it was really when I was 19 that I guess everything sort of happened for me. and Started to gel, you mean? And, yeah. yeah. Well, I, was, I was able to... To, I was given, I was trusted with with guiding my own future, I guess, um, because at the time I'd, I'd failed so many classes and teachers just, I had a principal that pointed at her degree and was like, you'll never get one of these. And so it was really, I had been, been put in a position where there were other women around me who said, um, Come in, come in. Hey, radio, radio likes noise. It's okay. Radio, it's not, yeah, there's, there's no cameras, don't worry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's okay. So it, for me, it, it was just, um, I was finally in a circle of support where women gave me the chance to, to figure out, not tomorrow, but, you know, my future, you know, a couple of years from now. So, um, and it was, and then it was also learning to be critical, like not just accepting, not just not accepting, you know, just being able to challenge and being able to have a, an analysis where I could make the connection back to me all the time, whereas everything was sort of abstract before that, so... After you had left home, though, did the idea that if someone gave you responsibility, would that that act would actually bring you around? Did that make sense to you then? I didn't. Well, I, it's funny because the place that I guess it really happened for me is called the Self Help Resource Center. So, it was the name was obvious enough to be a sign for me, <laughs> but but it, but reflecting on it, like it's really funny that 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 I being able to identify that that's actually what it was is giving being me being given the ability to help myself. Um, at the self-help resource center i think um i made that connection immediately but it's only because the name was so obvious it was slapping me in the face so <laughs> otherwise i don't think i would have noticed we're we're going to go now to the driftwood community center yeah, which um, is just across the street it's just across the street and it you has a number of youth programs okay. and services let's go okay where did you grow up tanika 
here and there. I went to school in Mississauga, and then I went to school in the East End of Toronto. Then I dropped out. <laughs> so um, where I went to school is usually where I grew up, but now I live in Parkdale. So I call that my home. This is my second home. And what do you see is the difference between Parkdale and this area? The biggest difference? Um, well, for what I'm, I mean, I'm still learning about Parkdale, but what I'm noticing is that um, the, this, downtown is where newcomers start and then they settle outside. And so um, people are a lot more, their issues are, are, are a little, are, are, um, they're the same, but in, I guess on the spectrum of extremes, they're less extreme than what I've seen in Parkdale. Um, in terms of newcomer issues. Youth, I don't, there isn't very much visibility for like in a, any other, for, for young people um, in Parkdale. Like I don't really see them anywhere, whereas here you see them, you see them everywhere. So I guess that's the other, the other issues, visibility. I've, I used to live in Parkdale and uh, I haven't lived there for three years and I've just noticed a huge change that it's really gentrifying. Yeah. Yeah, the, as you head further east, it's becoming. It's, yeah, that's the other thing. It's 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 very trendy to to be to be be from Parkdale. It's very chic. So that's the other thing. Whereas up here, I don't think anyone's ever going to try and open an art gallery in Jaden Finch. Um, just and it's also because the, I guess the value that's associated with the architecture downtown, people are really capitalizing on that and pushing people out, which brings them to communities like this, right? Yeah, I mean, even the art galleries are are now being pushed out by condo Developer. people, developers, yeah. and oh, you wonder where the people go. Yeah, well, it's funny they were trying to do a condo development here. I think the other thing that I don't, again, I don't know very much about Parkdale, but what I do know about Jane and Finch is that across from York Gate Mall, which is like the high end mall, yeah. um, they were trying to to high establish. End. Hey, hey, on the. <laughs> In Jada Finch, it's considered relatively high end, um, or that was the intention because they were going to build condos on that. Uh, yeah, and but the community, there are a lot of people in the community who were, who, yeah, who are against it, and so that's apparently what's has slow part of the reason why that it's been so delayed. Can't hold any more sardines in this can. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> straight up. Yeah. We've just come into uh, the the Driftwood Community Center. We're just in the doors, and. Like it's you're right. It, the rainbow's walking by us, Paul. Right. Yeah, now. I can mention like uh, when I'm one of the. F I come. I came. I used to come here a lot from my grandma. There's a bit. Well, there's actually some Vietnamese people there. Actually. Wow. Okay. So it must be today. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, they have a, a Vietnamese seniors group meeting. They meet like once a week and just to get the people together and involved. And they had a lot of interesting things. Like my grandma would come here, and they would have like a local firefighter come in and teach about fire safety and oh. prevention. So it's really good. They have a lot of things going on here. They teach ESL. They have different other cultures gathering together and everyone's mixing and mingling, getting to know each other. It's okay now. Everything's cool? Well, Parks and Rec has a policy on media, so... What's that? That media is not allowed in the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, without, with, like, um, because the, because often media comes and they ask the workers, what do you think about the violence in the community or whatever, right? So now they have a, um, like, they are able to direct the media where to go and. You know, media, oh, uh, Paul, yeah, Paul Martin's awesome. here, right? <laughs> Paul Martin's here. Then, oh no, the p media policies don't matter. But for anybody else, you know, it's okay. I don't need gotta to go, go and to the one eight hundred line to get all your answer, your questions answered. So. Okay, it's a school project. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're they're cool. Yeah, they won't stop us. Yeah. Hi, Hello. I'm Sheila. I'm Chris. Chris, Chris. Babin, how's Chris. it going? What do you do? Very well, thanks. Good. Um, I work with Seneca College. Uh, we're doing an outreach program where we're part of a lot of different community groups from the Jamaican Canadian Association to the Y to Toronto District School Board. We're um, offering a youth program that's free that people can sign up for. They're in it five days a week, uh, full time. And What do they do? They're all students that have been out of work, out of school for a while, had severe difficulties in one way or another and um, we're learning all kinds of skills whether it's Photoshop PowerPoint resume job skills um, part of it we're putting together a magazine that gives the people a chance to creatively express themselves you want to take us uh, up somewhere sure we're just going up the stairs now into one of the media rooms um, there's some people working on the magazine and some Photoshop so um, students are brushing up on their computer skills and uh, getting the chance to express themselves creatively, which they might not have had a chance yeah, to do before. Absolutely, too. Absolutely. So what sort of things do they write about? Uh, people write about their perspectives, their ideas, their experiences. So a lot of people 
have done some poetry, some people have done some creative writing, other people have done interviews where they've just uh, gone and spoken with a few people, asked some questions. Uh, people were very happy to write about the Prime Minister's visit to the centre. So, What did they write? Well, just that it was nice to see him here, but he kind of ran off without answering any questions other than the main media's questions. So people were a little disappointed that they didn't actually get to um, do more than look at the Prime Minister or the Mayor. You'll have to go and take a walk just so you can see the rooms, the little rooms, the little classrooms. A lot of things going on. Everybody is here. There's every age just in this sort of central culture, you know, yeah. getting along well and there's some older people there, they're playing yeah. board games and bingo. Yep. Seniors groups, all sorts yeah. of things. And you don't just come here to get entertained, you learn from each other. Yeah. A lot of programs that teach us kids and well, we, Women Moving Forward runs some of their programs here, and while we run, actually, when we were trying to book the space, it was already packed with um, language classes. There were two language classes. There was a pottery class. There was, um, there's the, the, the child care room, so it's designated for child care. So this, there's always something going on here. And it's, yeah, it's always packed. And, and then when, in the day, in the day when, um, like when all the programs are done, then all the kids come in because there's Brookview, there's um, Shoreham, there's the kids that you know go to Westview that live in the area. So it's there's always activity happening in the center. And actually, the funny thing, one funny thing I was gonna say is uh, when we were doing when I did the young leaders, we had a talent show, and it was on the stage in the gym, and two cruisers came, and people were really you know concerned about what, what it meant for the cruisers to, to come. And the police actually came in and played foosball and left. And, and it was like, it was very awkward because we didn't know how to react because we had booked so many rooms and they actually walked into one of our booked rooms, played foosball and then left. Um, and didn't really acknowledge what we were doing and then came back a little later to say that they had heard there might be some gunshots. But anyways, um, it was just, a, it's very funny the things that happen in, in the center, but everybody is usually, I would consider this the the this center the the heart of I guess north of of like of up top right like this is where, where most of the activity happens um so so it's pretty cool and then there's you know there's the kitchen too right so I know that there are also also cooking programs so for what, whatever you're whatever you are interested in there's something here yeah, for you and you want to be like a worldly chef just come to our driftwood <laughs> kitchen yeah. you'll be fusion a of every type of food known to man yeah. <laughs> When, now, when you say up top, you know, when this is the north end of up top, just can you describe the area that you mean? Up top? Yeah. Oh, man. Like, I guess it's like sort of the, it's the northern part of yeah. what's known as the Jane Finch. That's a lingo. That's yeah. a lingo. Yeah, yeah. There, there's an, um, like, unlike, for example, Connections, there's a reason behind it. I don't even know why it's called up top, other than it's north of Finch, right? Um, but I guess what characterizes the, the area is that is, I guess, the drift is driftwood um, because everything else behind 4400, which is where the Jane and Finch Center is, there are residential houses and just north and even just hmm, northeast, there's York University. So it, there is, there is a, there's a lot more green space, I guess, but there's, there's no connection to what the name, what up top means other than the fact that it's north of. Um, so it's just, it's base, it's a geographical identifier for, for people that live in the community. Perfect. Just wanted to know. Chris, I want to ask you, what's the number one thing you want people to know about Jane Finch? That it's a great area. There's a lot of amazing, intelligent, super creative people around here. And um, the government talks about fixing things. There's not a lot that needs to be fixed necessarily, but there are a lot of programs that can be put in place that need long-term funding. Every time we get a new government, we get a new package of ideas that takes years to get started. Without commitment to long-term stable funding, things don't happen. We need that. There's also um, a lack of consideration for what it means because this community is is a lot of newcomers, and so for newcomers to come and start again, and then a new package to say, okay, we're going to start this again, like it, it's just it's always it's so tumultuous, so you you never really get settled, right? So hence the reason for settlement services. Um, there's you're always having to restart and start because of the fact that there's all these you know short term short term projects and and then then they want to do findings and they want to start a committee on so and so, and we already know what is needed and we've been talking about what's needed. What do you think when you hear the news reports that always preface Jane Finch with the word notorious? It's, I think it's really just, 
it's it's a conversation word i think it was just it's just a word to provoke people to get them to start talking personally it, in my very like not knowing not hearing the word before i would think that it was simply a conversation starter to to show that you're either on one side or the other side and begin a conversation yeah it's a myth that was created by like the media if someone slipped on a banana at uh, jane and shepherd they'd be oh the accident at jane and finch oh my god yeah so <laughs> We just get blamed for everything that happens here, and it's just an—it's a name that the media uses. It's like a marquee name. You never hear—you never hear about the uh, notorious entertainment district, <laughs> where people are getting shot and stabbed every night of the week. But you hear about it as soon as something happens up here. But it's not like it's not happening, no. right? It is happening, and there are troubles. But it happens everywhere else too. Exactly. Well, and I think I think that there's also like the values that are associated with different communities like for example the entertainment district produces money like it produces income it 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 it's beneficial to have an entertainment district where people are not understanding the value of having a community like Jane and the Finch and so yeah, yeah so and and so they cre- I think that it's sort of like it's sort of related to poor bashing where you're trying to create a language where you're always putting down this group because you're making them you're trying to let everyone know that they're leeches and that they're not contributing anything because you're not valuing what they can actually contribute to to the group so they create this they create notorious and they say these the, the negative things about the community because they don't see any value in the community i think okay well we're going to pile in the back seat i'm going to sit between the two of you just for easy mic access okay and because I'm so thin. <laughs> oh, thanks for the laugh, Tanika. <laughs> so another interesting thing, since uh, my best friend is black, and his parents, you know, they're Jamaican, they have thick accents, and they, you know, they speak patois, right? So you, a lot, the normal person would go in, and they wouldn't understand a thing they're saying. But his dad would come up to me and say all this stuff, and I'd know exactly what he's saying. I can't uh, reproduce it, but trust me, it's thick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I have a funny feeling you'd get homesick if you left Jane Finch. Yeah, I would. <laughs> yeah, I'd miss a lot of the things and people here because, I mean, everything, you know, it is kind of dense, but everything's so close by the school, mailbox, bus stop, mall, everything's really convenient. If this was like Markham, you'd need a car just to go to the local convenience store or something because it's all houses, houses and houses and houses. thing is that um, just the way that the built, the, it's sort of a bad thing, but it's also a good thing in that it it's, it forces people who are here to create their own sense of community. Because, for example, um, like you've got the apartment buildings, and you have to people have to interact with each other because like, you got to walk to the the mall or you've got to you know take the bus somewhere. So you you get on the bus and you're usually interacting with with people. Whereas downtown, every you know you can go to a little shop and hop out of the shop, and no one will ever know that you've been, ever been in there. So. I think that it's the the urban planning. Why I don't completely agree with it also forces people to create their own sense of community, which I think is yeah. With is the also community, uh, I, I would you know bet a million dollars that you cannot find one fake person here. As where is is you if you go downtown or somewhere in some you know more posh neighborhood, yeah. there'd be a lot of pretentious people there. But here you can't find a single fake person because they're all stuck in the same boat. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to go to a really posh neighborhood and give them equal time now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. So we're driving down Jane right now, are we? Yeah, and I actually, I should have pointed out there was, there's a whole row of trees Mm. that were recently cut down because of the, um, the violence in the community and because a lot of the violence so they say happens on or around in close proximity to, um, Toronto community housing property, which is public housing, uh, their response to the violence was to cut down the trees so that it's easier to see the criminals. Um, clearly a band-aid solution and not taking into consideration what, I mean, the effects of the environment and, and both the, I guess, the environmental environment and then like just the what it means socially for people to have yeah. their trees cut down. Not only do you live in housing, but we're cutting down all your trees. We're taking out a, all, like all of your flower your green gardens. And, yeah. 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 So you're, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're living out, you're basically living on concrete and everyone can see into your house because we're just off the main street of Jane and you can mm. see directly into the back of people's houses. And okay. I don't know if you know the history of this. No, I don't. No, actually I don't. Yeah. I just know someone actually, from the community. Just... Yeah, someone from the community. You know, he, he did a mural and there's like that famous quote on the wall that everybody in this area knows. And if you know... All who look upon this picture enjoy an unquenchable thirst for learning and love for life. And and if you can see that no one has de- touched that mural oh, or yeah. defaced it, no one would imagine doing that. I've seen a whole bunch of murals through the community. Yeah, there would and be more coming they, down that way. They, um, they, the city of Toronto funds um, graffiti transformation projects. And... Um, 
basically what I mean some people classify I mean what are the kind of artwork that's in the community versus the graffiti transformation products the projects downtown I think are a lot more reflective of of the community and Aaron who's the artist that um, did the one there's one on the side of the Jane Infant Center as well also did this one and um, I think that the important piece of, of, of that project in the way that we do it up here is that a lot of the kids are taught to it's not just an artist that comes in and does this artwork and, and leaves or goes back to their house or whatever. They teach other young people about putting the mural together. Um, so I think that that's also really, yeah, really exit, important. Uh, the that area. Yorkwoods. Yorkwoods. I like to say that, uh, you know, this is mo one of the more, I guess, notorious. Well, it's pretty bad. Like, bottom lane. Back in the, you know, back, back then. Okay. Yeah. But like, you know, and that's when I was growing up back in the 80s, I have to say. But anyways. <laughs> I mean, me and my friends used to come here and we used to climb on the rooftops and we shot our little movies and it was really fun growing up here and there's like so much you can do here and it's not dangerous or you don't have to feel afraid for your safety. Do you know that this is Paul's house? No. Yeah, we're back at Paul's house. This realize, is where we so. began. <laughs> well, well, I just want to say thank you to both of you and uh, you know, this is a whole new Jane Finch for me. I really appreciate it a lot. So this, this is fun. I know I talked about some of the negative things, but it's important to talk about some of the negatives, to talk about how well or how much better off we could be if people knew about the community in, in, in this intimate way. Well, thank you, Paul Nguyen and Tanika Morgan, and they've been my tour guides through Jane Finch on a rainy afternoon. Yep. It's been really great. And that's it for the Friday edition of Sounds Like Canada and indeed for the week. And I want to thank everyone who helped put the show together this week. In Toronto, our producers Carol Warren, Jacqueline Kirk, Sue Campbell and Andre Pichet. In the studio, our studio director Natasha Aziz and technician Tim Lorimer. In Vancouver, Kathy Hunt, Ian Clayton, Rosemary Allenbach, Corey Howard and Michelle Elliott. And in Halifax, Alex Mason. The senior producer of Sounds Like Canada is Jason Proctor, and the executive producer of Sounds Like Canada is Philip Ditchburn. I'm Sheila Rogers. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you for listening. <laughs>